Hi friends, Joanna here. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks. I hope everybody is doing amazing. I want to do a quick video uh, for you guys today just to show you guys some cool estate sale finds I um, found over this past weekend. And um, I list the um, site that we use for our estate sales. Uh, if you guys have any estate sale um, sites that you know of, um, please comment. You know, um, these types of estate sales with the stuff that I got in today don't happen very often, maybe once every six months, but um, I am going to get started. So to start off with, I have these uh, Gooderman threads here. If you are a sewer or a quilter, you know that these are quite costly. So um, I got the, the five of these for $2. And um, there's a good amount of thread on here. This one might be uh, almost done here. But uh, yeah, for $2. They're probably about you know seven eight dollars in the stores, so not a bad deal, right? Okay, so moving along. So this estate sale, this person had tons, and I went. Generally, when you go to the estate sales, um, they're either two to three days. Uh, I went on the last day on Sunday, so a lot of the um, items for sale were already taken, but I got tons and tons of stuff as it was this woman had rooms and rooms filled with a whole entire wall floor to ceiling with these wooden stamps so when I was trying to look at the stamps there were hordes of people going through all the stamps so the only one I really could get my hands on was this one this little envelope right excellent condition so super cute right um they believe that this woman was um, a teacher and she owned a business and taught classes, but um, <clears throat> she had wall to wall everything. So these, this uh, red binding and this um, a sticker, a suitcase stickers that were stuck in there. And this little rickrack, these are perfect. I use these over and over and over again in my, um, uh, um, snippet rolls, uh, my slow stitch kits. I love the red. This will go in a heartbeat because I use this so much, but, um, I got these for a dollar. How awesome is that? Oh, the stamp I got for 50 cents. So, right. And you know that that would be at least 15 something dollars. I got this, uh, antique cast iron iron. So I have seen these irons in estate sales before, but they usually want like $30, $40 for it. And I'm going to spend $30, $40 for it. So this was originally $8. And because it was the last day of the sale, they always usually give you 50% off the most items, right? So I got this for $4. This is so cool. You know, back in the day, the way they used to iron is put this on the hot stove and then press their clothes that way so it's an excellent condition super fun that was one of my favorite awesome things and this um this ribbon here is oh i got some one wonder under on it is um huge giant roll it says that this is a hundred yards but there's not a hundred yards in here it's probably i don't know can't even tell you but um I'm eventually just gonna wash all of this this is the only thing I didn't get to wash yet but um this this um ribbon I use pretty much in everything snippet roll snippet roll kits um I, I add these into my slow stitch kits uh I use this for pretty much everything junk journal you name it. So this was one of a heck of a find, if you guys can see all of this. Yeah, so I didn't get to watch this yet. It has a little 
you know, staining on the bottom on this part here. But there's no smell, so that's always a good sign. Um, yeah, this uh, will go pretty quickly. I won't be 100 before I use the rest of this, but this is definitely uh, an awesome find. And I paid $2 for this whole thing. Can you believe it? $2. So when you go to these estate sales, you have to pick your poison. If you go on the first day of the estate sales, you're going to pay, you know, you're going to pay pretty good money. If you go on the last day, then you can get everything for 50% off, but you're not going to get, you know, everything. Because originally um, they were saying that the first day, um, this woman had um, a lot of uh, vintage wooden spools. I would have loved to have gotten my hands on that. But I know they would have charged a lot more money for that than I would be willing to pay. So I usually just go sometimes on the last day depending on, you know, what is at the, at the sale. So this originally was a 35 yard roll of the Pelon Wonder Under. So um, like it says, it's a paper backed web for your fabric gives it, you know, um, some stability. So this one I'm going to say is probably about five or six yards left in here, but I got five or six yards of this. This was a dollar, right? This, this whole, and I've used, um, some of this already because, um, I use this a lot for my, um, uh, uh I can't even talk today for my, um, oh my God, for my appliques. Oh my God. I apologize guys. You know, those days. So these are great for appliques. I also, uh, use these for pretty much anything that I'm quilting. Um, you know, you can use these for bags, um, anything that you're quilting. This is a nice lightweight, um, stabilizer. These are generally made for like clothing. So this would be, this is like a um, ultra light. Uh, it has the paper on the back. So if you are going to you, may, you cut something out with your Cricut machine or your Sizzix, you can, to give your fabric some more stability and have your items cut better, you can run this, you could put this on the back of your fabric and, you know, run your Cricut and your Sizzix machines and this helps out a lot because it's nice and light. Okay, so here goes to our little tchotchkes. I, I got a bunch of uh, cool stuff. I got this little um, plastic triangle. It was in the bottom of a sewing bin. But how cool for quilting, right? It's a nice plastic triangle. Love it. I don't think I paid anything for this because it was on the bottom of a thing. I don't even think she even noticed this was in there. So that was a freebie. Um, here is another freebie. This was a rotary cutter, but it doesn't retract. So um, if anyone could tell me what this is on here, like what kind of rotary cutter. It, it, this has this plastic thing that's built into it. And there's this little thing on here and it has a screw I guess because I mean when I tried it I just kind of it might be just a grip thing so you know not sure but I have to get something for it to cover the blade but if anyone can help me out and this is my, is this an old one I don't know but I know this blade is super sharp because I tried it a couple times I, I tried it on denim okay so I got some Velcro for free. This was on the bottom of the bin with triangle. I got some of these um, sew on snaps. These are also free. They were on the bottom of the bin that I had my stuff in. So more freebie items. But what are you gonna charge for that anyway, really? They're just, all right, so I got some, uh, needles for my machine 
So there's a pack of three in here. You know, needles, we use them a lot for sewing and quilting. And uh, so there's three in here. There's three in here. I got one in here. There's four in here, right? So I got, let's see, five, eight, 11 here. Oh, including this is a double needle which is awesome because my machine does have double needle. My new machine does have double needle option. So I paid a dollar for all, for all these needles. So, and she threw in these little, um, um, large eyed needles here. So these are great for uh, my slow stitching, right? These are tapestry needles, but, um, these are great because they're, they have a nice little sharp edge with the big eye, which is great because sometimes it gets to be too dull and you can't really use them. So, all right. So I got 11 needle sewing needles for my machine. I got some cool slow stitching needles that I could use. And um, what did I say? Yeah, a couple dollars for that. Um, I got this McCall's Home Decor. Uh valances um these are really super cool to make because i was thinking about making ones for our kitchen and she didn't charge me for this so that was freebie when you go to the last day you like i said you have to pick your poison so i got some um floss here and this is the color that i use the most for my slow stitching this rose colored that was free Okay, so now we're going to go on to the fabric here to show you. All right, so I got a whole pile of um, assorted muslins here. Um, a whole bunch, different colors, different, um, you know, your creams, your ivories, your whites. I got a little bit of the tan color. I got this, um, I don't know if you can see it, but. That's not a stain, that's a piece of thread. I washed, everything's been washed on high and dried. I use the Downy Rinse and Refresh, which makes the smell so much nicer, plus the Unstoppables, so there is no smell. These are, actually these were in great condition because this woman had more fabric than I don't even know. Uh, this was, it was incredible. I went on the third day and she had still a whole room full of like um you know plastic bins of fabrics so imagine what she must have had on the first day Ugh. so this is kind of like um like a weaved lace linen fabric all i know is it is so pretty i absolutely cannot wait to, um to use this these i use a lot for my slow stitch kits i use them for um my snippet rolls all the time i use these to put for my um, fabric and lace clusters. This is perfect for those. If you guys watch my video on the clusters, you'll see that I use a lot of this type of fabric. And this, I love these little, this eyelet, <clears throat> excuse me, these eyelet, I don't know if you could see these little flowers. If you can see them. They're just little, it's a little eyelet fabric with little flowers on it. So pretty. Again, I use them for the same stuff. Um, yeah, I guess there's probably, these were all in pieces. So I don't know if she was cutting them up to make stuff, but there's probably about three yards here of just the muslin. So yeah, it's worked out pretty good. So the fabrics I paid, I'll tell you in a second, but um, for the fabrics, I just paid one price, but let me show you what I got first. Okay. So I have some, some of these are, um, in when I folded them, there's pieces, smaller pieces inside the rolls. So to keep it manageable, I just wanted to show you guys some of the, the fabrics I got. We'll start from the bottom here. So cute little, um, leaf fabrics, some geometric, some uh, vintage 
green flowers, some plaid, just some more flowers, more flowers and more flowers. So these are the greens and um, just so lovely. And I can't wait to use these all because I did a, um, a video on an eBay haul probably about six uh, months ago. And I've used most of all those fabrics because again, there's snippet rolls. Um, we just started making um, snippet rolls that you can decorate yourself. You can embellish yourself. So they're just um, snippet rolls that are unembellished. Uh, okay, so let's see here. There's lots of, like I said, there's lots of little pieces. So if they're, it's, if it's, um, folded weird that's why so these pretty little brown florals the brown and blue floral florals some peach see this is why people don't wash their cottons because they get these weird like edges a lot of people don't wash there because you get all these little stragglers so then you have to sit and trim everything so um, but I like to watch especially anything that I buy like at an estate or vintage have to wash them so some the polka dots some stripes there's a lots of floral um um patterns so like yeah these are all in small little pieces right lots of fun patterns here okay i'm gonna run quickly through all right so i have the blues here these are all pre-cut uh squares different size squares all different blue florals right lots of fun patterns here again some more florals okay some more lots of blues this is probably about a yard here so this is really really super pretty love that you see you guys um use a lot of fabric yes I love this these little petite floral patterns they're just really lovely all right some more florals more more I wish I could find more of this because this is really really nice but you know <clears throat> what happens right the ones you really love there's that the least of all right this is a cotton canvas color very pretty and uh, these are cotton canvas too. So these are a lot of nice um, vintage fabrics. There's also some new ones. Uh, lots of new, some vintage Joanne Kessler's. Very nice. Um, let's see here, we're on to the reds. Okay. Yeah, so these are small pieces, but um, yeah, let's start from the bottom. A lot of little pieces inside this folded in, but you know, cause they were pre-cut, she must've been making stuff with them. So super fun. Same with this, pretty hearts, uh, some more hearts. This was uncut. This was probably a half a yard right here. Look how gorgeous that is, right? So pretty, love these patterns. Let me know what you guys think about these um, fabrics. If you have a favorite, so this one is just little red leaves on red. This was probably a whole yard. So not too many were whole yards. Um, super cute. It reminds me like a little bit of a Christmas kind. All right, little florals. More florals. These are, Now these are getting to the smaller pieces. Right, so these are all like little... So these here are the ones I wish I could have gotten more of like this because this has my snippet rolls. If you guys know me, these are nice um, vintage Cranston fabrics. Um, so these are the ones I wish, you know, I would have had more of like this one. This is the piece, the only piece I got of this fabric. And this was my favorite one. Look, <laughs> right? It was such a shame because it's so pretty. Oh, well, I got so many cool things. You know, these, we use a lot of these fabs, fabrics up a lot because like I said, we, we make a lot of stuff. So it's not like this is a, 
I'm rehoarding someone else's stuff. We go we use a lot of fabrics, so and having the smaller pieces is perfect for us because we I love to do the appliques. I'll show you some of the ones I've been working on. And these smaller pieces are great because you're not um buying yards of fabric, right? And you could just use the little pieces that you like and then you know move along and the smaller pieces I've already started quilting some I've trimmed some of I've washed and trimmed some of these up so I've already started quilting the little pieces you know just making some quilt blocks and I, I've made some appliques and I'll show you when we're done here so I love this little orange fabric it's so happy and pretty right <clears throat> some orange polka dot now this is so pretty I used this in one of our um in one of my blocks super fun vintage fabrics right um so a lot of these you'll see they have um they're the same patterns but just in different colors different uh color variations so who doesn't love some fun vintage plaid right so this um i love my little vintage flowers Oh, this was the same. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, you'll see, like, these are, look very similar, right? How cool and retro is that? <laughs> Fun, right? Love that. Right? And how <laughs> does that remind you of, like, the old Pyrex dishes that they used to have, right? All right, this looks a little fall. See, like, this is the same pattern different colors another pyrex dish pattern <laughs> but these are great love these just love these these have little zoo animals on them um some more plaid and this this i can't even unravel because underneath this roll is lots of little pieces i didn't get to trim yet but eventually when i'm done with the video i i've had all this stuff out waiting to do this video for the last couple of days so I just love this pattern. It's so pretty. Right? Okay. So like I said, most of the fabrics that we got most, pretty much everything was just smaller pieces. I'm going to say a fat eighth, if that's actually a thing. Right? So like these were little pieces, but I welcome little pieces. They're good. You don't have bolt. So it looks like... You know, we got, I had gotten a lot of fabric, but I really, yardage wise, I really didn't. Yeah, see like all the scraggly ends. That's what happens when you wash some of these cottons. All right, so this, is, I didn't really get a lot of the pink and the purple, although I was hoping to. Um, these are just strips, but so pretty. Right? Again, my, my video is upside down. Okay, so some more pinks, right? Purple. Some um, fun little baby fabric. So cute. So this here was probably one of the ones I got a bunch of. So this here is... Um, I think there was probably about two yards in here. And then I had gotten some small pieces. So yeah, not very much as far as yardage, but. So this one here, this is a very light pale pink with um, some flowers on it. You can see it better. Yeah, so this was probably about a yard and a half, I think. So I think these were the only ones really that I got big yardage of. This one here is gorgeous. This reminds me of a Jan Shore fabric. So this here is, I think there's probably, when I took it out of the dryer, I had to wash this separately and dry this separately because there was probably about four or five yards in here. And it's just so pretty. Love it. It's beautiful. You can see it. Yeah, so it's got this little these little petite flowers on them. 
with the browns and there's a hint of like little blues see those blues little pieces with the little blues on them right so yeah quite successful again we uh, yardage wise i really uh, there's only about a couple of fabrics that we got you know maybe a couple yards of except for that one a couple last couple at the end here so I went to head and um, when I was um, tidying up some of the uh, fabrics, I had some little pieces and I just put together an eight by 11 block. I didn't even, you know, size it up. I just, I just did random quilting. I just took all the pieces I cut and I just quilted them all together. And, um, this is what I came up with. So that's what's good about getting the smaller pieces. You can make your quilt blocks. You could make, you know, you can make a little, a little purse with that, right? How cute is that? Right? You could do so much with these. So making these uh, quilt blocks ahead of time, you can, if you want to make something in the future, you are eliminating um, having all of these scraps laying around you've actually made something with it where you can use it for something else, which is super awesome. Also, I went ahead and I took some of the scraps and I, <clears throat> excuse me again, I made some applique. So here in my applique binder here, so um, I cut out some hexes with them and I cut out some little houses and some little tulips and some birds right some water some little hats some little I made some little coffee cups here so these are just one of the some of the ones I've been working on let's see here so um, the small pieces that you get are awesome you could make so many cool things right so this little boot, little kitties, right? So this is the um, finished kitty. Use a little blanket stitch for it, right? So don't throw your little pieces away. Cut them out. Make some appliques, right? Some fun little hearts. <clears throat> Excuse me, right? So I made some little houses a little bird and some more little houses right um, and I just took some of the little pieces and I made some little hearts and I just applique them did use some blanket stitches some more little houses made some little funky houses right so the little pieces are kind of cute you know these are just little triangles and squares and that's it so these are so much fun to make so yeah that's why we welcome whenever I go to an estate sale and we get some small pieces um, you can cut the shapes out if you have a Cricut machine or um, a Sizzix machine you can just cut them up uh, if not you can um, you know copy and trace with tracing paper onto the back side of the um, uh, wonder under the pellon I showed you and that's it make some quilt blocks that's it all right thanks guys thank you so much for all of your support I just want to do a quick video to show you what we got and um, I hope uh, everyone has a nice Easter and I will be talking to you soon thank you so much bye bye